We've seen so many great events emerge on April 20th. You know, Seattle Hemp Fest comes to mind. Um, but now it almost seems like it's kind of transitioned to not just being a day of celebration and advocacy, but also in the era of legalization, it's become almost a day of, you know, a lot of sales, almost the Black Friday of cannabis, if you will. Hey there, welcome to Cultivate. So great to have you here. Wherever you are, I hope you're having a fantastic 420. My name is Rochelle Gordon. I'm the cannabis copywriter here at Bovida. And today we are joined by the fabulous Lance Lambert. Lance, how are you doing, my friend? I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Always good catching up with you, Rochelle. Oh, absolutely. Same here. And I know that you're a longtime friend of Bovida, VP of Marketing at Green Bros, and just a longtime cannabis community member, OG, and just fabulous (laughs) to have you here on 420 of all days. Likewise, yes. This is one we look forward to every year, right? I know there's a few others, 710s coming up and all the rest, but 420 is definitely the historical, I think, for, for most of us. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's it's the day among days, I would say. So let's get right into it. I just wanted to talk to you about the history of 420. I think there's a lot of, you know, speculation about where 420 comes from. And I would love to hear your breakdown of the history of 420, the legend, as it were. Yeah, it's definitely and it's something that hits a bit close to home. To be honest, uh, you know, myself growing up in Marin County, a little town called San Anselmo, which is right next to where the whole 420 movement uh, really began. And it wasn't quite a movement as much as it was just an expression uh, used by a group of kids that went to uh, a school in San Rafael, which is right next to San Anselmo. And for those that don't know, Marin County is just on the other side of the Golden Gate Bridge from uh, San Francisco. Uh, but yeah, it was back in the 70s. And this group of kids, uh, they meet up every day. Uh, there's a statue, which you can still find uh, at the, the high school there in San Rafael. And uh, they'd meet up at the statue and venture out to find this lost cannabis crop that they had heard about. So evidently, as the story goes, there was a individual that worked for the Coast Guard that was uh, based out in Point Reyes, which is short drive from Marin County to the coast of Northern California. And uh, so they had this map to this lost crop that he had planted uh, out there, uh, not too far from the beach. Uh, This is something that unfortunately they went every day and didn't find it, but it became a bit of a tradition to uh, give the expression of, hey, you know, 420, want to head out and see if we can find the crop. And of course, they jump in the ride and consume their uh, flower along the way. And these individuals... Uh, they're all still around. Um, a lot of them are into different ventures these days. Uh, they're in their upper 50s, uh, but got to catch up with them on a Arc View of 420 celebration last week. And it's so cool to see them. I'm actually friends with one of their daughters because, truth be told, their daughter's a little bit closer to my age <laughs> than I am to theirs. But um, but it's just a neat tradition. And it went so far from there, right, because it first came into an expression they used, and then it got picked up by the Grateful Dead, which obviously was very uh, big in San Francisco. The roadies started using it as they traveled around the country. And then it just, it just the epitome of organic expansion of that expression. And what it's become today, obviously, is so much more than what it was back then. Right. It's truly become ubiquitous in our in our culture, you know, and Initially, it really felt like a day kind of of celebration, of advocacy. You know, we've seen so many great events emerge on April 20th. You know, Seattle Hemp Fest comes to mind. Um, But now it almost seems like it's kind of transitioned to not just being a day of celebration and advocacy, but also in the era of legalization, it's become almost a day of, you know, a lot of sales, almost the Black Friday of cannabis, if you will. How would you say that will affect the culture in the future? Do you think that... You know, we could bring it back to a day of advocacy, remembering where we started, where we're going. Or do you think that that kind of corporate mindset is going to permeate the culture? That's an excellent question. I really hope that it does remain a constant as a recognition of where we came from uh, and not just where we are, but where we're going. To your point, it has become a bit commercialized. The one thing that I think it's a little off-putting, and I know that the Waldos, as they're called, this this group of individuals that started 420, I know that um, that they've had to accept that it's really been commercialized, and, and the thing that I think bothers me a little bit, as it does them, is just how many people have implemented into business names or into product names, or, you, you know, they're kind of 
it's a little bit of plagiarizing to a certain extent, as opposed to stepping back and acknowledging, you know, this is the day that we recognize, uh, again, this segue that we're making from prohibition to legalization. Uh, so having said that, there are still events. Like you said, there's the festival up in Seattle, traditionally, uh, that's every year for 420. There's also a big celebration on what we call Hippie Hill in San Francisco and Northern California, which I definitely recommend uh, to those that haven't been. Um, but it's something that's just now starting to take off internationally, too, I'd have to add, because it wasn't something I heard people speak of in Europe or Australia or South America more so until recent years going out there and they actually know and reference 420. I think that really captures what we would like 420 to be remembered as, right? It's something, it's just a nod or an acknowledgement to this movement that's not just local, regional, countrywide, but it's it's truthfully a global movement uh, that we're all supporting. Absolutely, it really has transcended the globe. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna throw you a little curveball, Lance. How about some favorite uh, 420 memories? Any, any of yours stand out for you? Any events stand out that you'd like to share? You know, yes. I actually would have to say, uh, you know my history. I came out of the green closet as an uh, advocate versus activist. You know, I say that I, I, I preach with, a, with an open hand versus a closed fist in my support. But the legal opportunity I had in cannabis came about in Colorado. And the irony does not escape me. The fact that I grew up in Northern California was around it. Honestly, cannabis was what helped me be able to save up to go to college in San Luis Obispo in California. So it's played a component in my life. Uh, but more recently, uh, breaking into the legal industry uh, in late 2013 in Colorado, they would have a festival in uh, the square right between the state capital and the um, in the, the local you know, Denver uh, city capital. And so here you have this large park and it just so happened my office at the time when I was with the cannabis uh, had balconies that overlooked this square uh, right at the top of what we call uh, the, the tr golden triangle, which is the oldest neighborhood in, in downtown Denver. To look over that and to see the first year it was uh, statewide legal for adult use, which was 2014's 420. It was next level. It was really something that coming from, again, the background of growing up in NorCal, where it's always be, been a part of the culture and is always accepted. I had friends, I had uncles uh, that grew and consumed, and it was never faux pas or taboo um, as much as Dare tried to make it, right? Uh, but to see that, I think that is one of the most memorable. Uh, and then also having a 420 overseas. That's another thing, you know, being over in Europe for 420 and seeing how they acknowledge and recognize it again for it to make that leap over the pond as they say uh, you know that was something that was again coming from northern california and being a kid that grew up around it it was just so cool to see uh, how widespread it's become so yeah that's super awesome i have definitely. yet to experience um, an international 420 but i have been to the uh, denver celebration in 2018 Oh, so yeah, you still, I, I think it still had a bit of a feel of that. It's gone through different iterations, right? But it's yeah. still touches on it. Yeah, this was more, you know, I think like Lil Wayne was playing. So it's far more, <laughs> you know, it was like definitely it's, different. And if I recall, it started raining literally at 420. Like a huge, like the sky I just like opened up year. and poured. And everyone had their huge joints and they were just getting wet. And it was chaos, but it was beautiful. <laughs> I do remember that I was by that time I was back in Southern California with um, I, I believe with Bovida is based out of SoCal though and I remember hearing about that so it's interesting because it's changed I think that's one thing right quick just to share you know it's always been an acknowledgement again of you know freedom of the plant and uh, ending prohibition and a little bit of you know against the system if you will um, and none of us in a again in a closed fist fashion it's not uh, you know to be out of spite or anything but it's just saying, hey, this is something that at one point was not illegal or illicit. Uh, quite honestly, it's it's such a traditional plant from an herbal medicine standpoint when you speak to people over in Asia or in South America. Uh, but it, it is interesting because the dynamic changes and you probably saw that and felt that in Colorado because all of a sudden it's in a legal market. So the chant kind of changes. You know, it used to be legalize it and, and prohibition. Now it's just a, a, a day of celebration and camaraderie of, of all backgrounds that support it. It's not just the quintessential stereotype stoner. It's all colors and, and backgrounds and ethnic and cultural. And that's what I see when I go into dispensaries. 
every time I'm on tour, like I, I think I shared with you, I'm in South uh, South Washington in Vancouver right now, and I go to a dispensary uh, that I've known very well. Every time I go in there, it's such an eclectic group. And again, for me, in my mind, I'm like, this is so cool because it's not what the traditional ideology has been of the consumer associated with cannabis. It's all walks of life. It's all all backgrounds. And again, I think that's what comes full circle in celebrating this special day. Absolutely. Well said. Way to put a nice, nice little yeah. bow on top of that beautiful 420 <laughs> package, Lance. I love it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> love it. Well, Lance Lambert, VP of Marketing at Green Bros, longtime friend of Bovida. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. Everyone celebrate your day. And again, it's all about good vibes. Thanks again, Rochelle. It's always good catching up with you. Thanks, Lance. See you soon. 